this occasion. What a beautiful day. What a beautifully decorated church. What a, few, what a beautiful bride. What a handsome groom. This is the perfect day for a wedding. You see, weddings, the union of one man and one woman for one lifetime, are God-ordained. Together, we are all taking part in one of the grandest traditions in all of creation. Marriage is that timeless symbol that God has chosen to represent his love for all mankind. In fact, Jesus' very first miracle on this earth happened at a wedding. Just like he did on that day, at this wedding, he promised his, his miraculous help when two people enter into this union humbly and sincerely asking for his leadership. So we've all gathered here today to witness you both do exactly that, and we couldn't be more excited. Friends and family, welcome. You may be seated. The bride and groom have asked their pastor, Pastor Matthew Ellison, pastor of Hope Sound Bible Church, to come and pray a prayer of blessing on this special occasion. Would you bow your heads and pray with us? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come at this grand celebration. We thank you for Justin and Amy and their love, their growing love for one another. We thank you for their growing love towards you. And so, Lord, our prayer is, is that their life would mirror your love, that their marriage would exemplify your faithfulness, and that this ceremony would bring honor and glory to you, not only today, but in the many days ahead. We pray your blessing in this sacred event. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Who gives this woman to this man? Guys, this is an exciting day. It is. I've been excited about this day for a long time as I've watched you guys come together. I called this way back when. <laughs> and uh, boy, what an awesome, awesome privilege to have been in your pastor, have had some personal influence in your life, and to watch you guys as individuals come to these moments. I remember you guys calling me individually and saying, I don't know what's going to happen next. And you talking about the one or the other, and uh, I knew from listening to the other one what was going on, and I couldn't tell the other one what was going on. <laughs> and so I'm grateful for the opportunity to have a part in this day, and that all the enjoyment that's going to be. But this is serious. This is serious. And so I want to just hear from you both that you understand exactly what's going on today. Justin, do you know what you're about to do? I do. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Marriage is a sacred institution designed by God at the foundations of the earth, and it's upheld by his power. It's a holy union that should not be entered into casually, but should be entered into honestly and sincerely before God. Today, you will make promises. You will pledge your love to Amy. You will pledge to honor her and cherish her. And forsaking all others, keep yourself faithful to her and her alone. Today, you will offer yourself as a man willing to lay down your life for this your friend. If today you intend to stand before God and in the presence of your friends and family and to make such promises that are binding for now and time and or until death do you part, let it be known by saying, I do. Now I do. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, I know you understand what you're doing. Marriage really is a sacred institution designed by God at the foundations of the earth and it's upheld by his power. It really is a whole union and should not be entered into casually, but should be entered into honestly and sincerely before God. Today, you will make promises. You will pledge your love to Justin, to honor him, cherish him, and forsaking all others, keep yourself faithful to him and him alone. Today, you will offer yourself without reservation, promising yourself to this man. If today you intend to stand before God and in the presence of your friends and family and make such promises that are binding for time or until death do you part, let it be known by saying now, I do. Audience, this couple is precious to us. We love Justin and Amy. We want their very best. Today they have come to this sacred moment in our presence and before God to give themselves to one another. If today you and I intend to love Justin and Amy and support them in their journey together, 
to aid them and give them comfort and do everything within our power to help them uphold the promises made in our presence today. Let it be known by saying, we do. We do. Justin and Amy, it's an honor to be a part of your wedding. It's not every day that a guy gets to officiate or help officiate in his grandson's wedding when I'm not even 40. <laughs> now they don't understand that, but you two do. It's been a blessing to watch as you have grown up and now are joining your lives together. Who would have known that three years ago at CCYC that as team captains, today you would be standing here? Mm. Now, Pastor Nate knew that. <laughs> we don't know how, but somehow he seemed to think he knew. But you know who did know? Yeah. God did. That's right and he brought your lives together. The truth is, is that we're here today for two very different reasons. For all of us, bridesmaids, groomsmen, congregation, Pastor Nate, myself, we're here because of you two. That's right. We're here because of Justin and Amy. We're here because we love you and we want to celebrate with you. But you're not here because of us. You didn't do all of this so that we would come together just so that you could visit with us. You're here for one reason. Yeah, that's right. You're here because of love. Because the God who is love has put in the heart of humanity the ability to love. Yeah. And he has brought you two together in love one for another. What began as just a mutual relationship developed into a deeper intimacy and a love that has brought you to this altar, so to speak, to bring your lives together as one. It's doubtful that you could find a greater picture in all of Scripture of marriage than the picture of the church that Paul writes about in Ephesians chapter 5. And this is what Paul says. He says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you, and particularly so love his own wife as himself, mm -hmm. and let the wife see that she respects her husband. As we consider this evening, it is of great importance to note that marriage was the first institution that God ordained. In the Old Testament, before God had created uh, the law or developed the law, before He'd given the law, before He had even made a covenant with man, God ordained marriage. Yes. And in the New Testament, Pastor Nate referenced this. Before Jesus preached his first sermon, before he conducted his first miracle, and before he had died for the church, it was at a wedding yes. that he came to attend and there performed his first miracle. The point is, is that marriage is sacred to God. He ordained it, right. and he graced it with his own presence. Can I tell you... This evening, God graces your wedding. Mm -hmm. He That's is right. here. Paul said that marriage is one of the great mysteries of God. We would agree with that. Why did Paul say that? And what does he mean by that marriage is a great mystery? From the beginning, God intended for marriage to be between one man and one woman for life. According to Genesis 2, 24, he intended for a man to leave his father and his mother, to be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. God plans for marriage to be that two uniquely different people, both in gender and in personality, would come together for the purpose of fulfilling a complementary role together. Therefore, marriage is a sacred two-way street. Right. It's a separation and a union. Right. Both of you today are separating yourselves from your direct authority, your homes. Amy, you're leaving the home that you have known for so many years. Justin? You're leaving your home that you've known for so many years. And he's bringing you together. Together you'll build a new home. Amy, you're submitting to a new headship, a new authority. Justin. Justin, you're assuming a new headship. Amy. And together you will work to build this new home and grow your relationship. Not only is it a day of separation, but it's a day of union as you join your lives together. 
It's important to notice that God said the two shall become one flesh. That's important. He didn't say that the two would become one mind, because you won't always think alike. He didn't say that you'd be one spirit, but he said you become one flesh. That means that as you work through the challenges of life, you will need to continue to grow your relationship so that you can respond as one. God will allow you to continue to think uniquely like you do now. This ceremony won't change that. But what it can do is bring you together in deepening your relationship as you respond as one flesh. Both of you will need to learn to compromise a little so that you might respond as one flesh. This takes time and effort, but also the help of God. Paul has reminded us in Ephesians that marriage is a picture of Christ and His church, just as Christ gave Himself for the church. So you too, Justin, will need to give yourself sacrificially to Amy. And just as the church responds to this sacrificial love that Christ gave in His headship, so you too, Amy, will need to respond to Justin's headship. But this isn't done alone. God gave us, the church, His Holy Spirit. And He's given you His Holy Spirit to enable you as you come together as one flesh. If you will ask your Heavenly Father, the designer of love and marriage, He will grace your home with His presence and His wisdom and His enabling power. Seek Him first and He will supply your needs. Honor Him and He'll honor you. Love Him and He'll embrace you. Love like Him and He will bless your marriage with closeness, strength, and spiritual unity. As both of you come to the cross of Christ, you will find each other there and the Lord. So make it your commitment to come to Jesus where you will find the way, the truth, and the life, both individually and as a couple. It's truly an honor to be a part of your special days. You pledge your lives one to another and enter into this mystery which Paul calls marriage. So let me address each of you individually. Amy, let me start with you. You're not just coming into, uh, I'm sorry, uh, when you come into the youth department, I was just finishing up my tenure here as pastor. While I haven't had the opportunity to get to know you as well as my wife has, I've observed your spiritual growth and your desire to follow the Lord and to allow your life to be a reflection of His grace. God has given you a gift of teaching and a heart of compassion. I've watched as you've poured your life into the young people here at Hope Sound. My own two boys were a part of your PE class, and they have been impacted by your investment and your care. You're a strong person with a heart that wants to help others. God has given you the ability to be an influencer and a helper in Justin's life and ministry. There are things that you will bring to this marriage, perspectives, views, and thoughts, which need to be heard. No doubt there will be days that he needs your strength and your encouragement. Or maybe a little extra attention to communicate the lesson will be in order. You'll need patience as you learn to work together as one. The role that God has given to you as a helpmate to Justin unfortunately has been dismantled and abused in our day. Many believe that that simply means that you become a doormat that Justin wipes his feet on or a hat rack that he hangs his hat on or maybe a servant who carries out his every whim and wish. But according to Scripture, that's not true. In fact, as you study the Old Testament in particular, you'll discover a neat reality. God identified to Israel as their helper, just as He calls you to be Justin's helper. And nowhere do we find that God became a doormat, a coat rack, or a servant to Israel. But instead... He was the enabler of Israel to do what they couldn't do on their own. That means that you have a vital part in helping Justin to accomplish what he couldn't do on his own. You get to live out the same role in your marriage that God lives out to Israel. And you will enable Justin to do what he can't do on his own. You will be his strength, his encouragement, and his confidence. As God leads you guys into the future that is unknown to you now but perfectly clear to him, Keep one hand firmly placed in God's hand and the other tightly laced in Justin's. 
As you learn to fulfill Paul's words in Ephesians and submit to Justin's leadership, you will build great confidence in him and develop a deeper trust in the Lord as you pray for your husband. Justin, it's been my privilege to watch you grow over the past several years. I'll never forget when Joel told me that God had put you on his heart to disciple and mentor. I had been telling him for a little while that he needed to find somebody to pour his life into. And when he told me that it was you, I didn't know much about you. I didn't know you very well. I didn't know you that well then, but I'm pleased over the years to have watched your life as you have grown and allowed the Lord to mold you and shape you into a fine, godly man that you are today. In a spiritual sense, you're my grandson. <laughs> and I want you to know that I'm proud of you. Yeah, sure. It's evident to all that God has put his hand on you and has submitted you to his leadership. Yep. Now he's placing in your hands Amy's hands and her heart. Don't take that responsibility lightly. You hold the power to bless future generations with your obedience to the Lord or bring great pain and suffering if you should choose to walk away from his leadership. Take great care to guard your heart, and in so doing, you guard your marriage. Paul indicated that your part of marriage is a weighty load. You're to love Amy as Christ loved the church yeah, right. and gave himself for it, and that your love should be a reflection of Christ's love for the church, which he gave for himself. I know you like to work out, I know that because I know you've had surgery on your shoulder. <laughs> but the weight that is being placed on your shoulders today can be lightened by coming under the yoke of Christ, right. which Scripture says is easy yeah. and makes the burden light. Right. Christ himself wants to become your help as you lead Amy and lead your family. Your marriage will provide a great gym, only this will not increase your physical strength. God is placing you over a new home that will, require, we, that will require great spiritual strength to lead your family. Daily, you'll need to spend time in God's Word to find strength and wisdom to know how to navigate life's challenges. There will be times you feel stretched to your limit. Just remember that in your weakness, yeah. then yeah. is His strength yeah. made yeah. perfect. Amen. Justin, this new workout room called marriage was designed by God and, he's trusted, and, and we trust him for strength, and he will aid you. Justin and Amy, my prayer is, is that God will bless you both and bless your marriage. May your union be a, a reflection of Christ's likeness that points others to him. God bless you. At this time, the couple would like to participate in a special ceremony that symbolizes their love and devotion to one another. Justin and Amy, our hearts long to be here in person today to celebrate this beautiful occasion of two hearts blending and two families coming together. We, the Stratmans, are so thankful to have had the joy of watching your lives and development in your relationships with God. Today, as Justin and Amy join their lives together, they have chosen to symbolize this with a kintsugi ceremony. This Japanese art form is a unique way of repairing a piece of broken pottery. It may have been invented around the 15th century. Upon breaking his favorite cup, a Japanese man, Ashikaga Yoshimasa, sent it to China to be repaired. It was returned with metal ligatures, or staples, which were both impractical and unsightly. The cup was then taken to local Japanese craftsmen for repair, and these craftsmen repaired the cracks with lacquer resin and gold dust, highlighting those cracks in beauty rather than covering over or hiding them. The idea of kintsugi is the belief that beauty can be found through brokenness. The fractures on the bowl do not indicate the end of the object's life, rather an essential moment in its history. Ernest Hemingway said, the world breaks everyone and afterward, many are strong in broken places. 
The flaws of the bowl are not hidden from inspection, but instead emblazoned with golden significance. Repair requires transformation. The broken and repaired bowl is actually more beautiful than the previous pristine one. The gold veins in the bowl, as in our lives, serve as a map of the things that have shaped us. Justin and Amy, you stand here today in front of this room of people as disciples on a journey toward eternity. Our God-created world has been broken. Because of the fall, sin and death, pain and suffering are a part of this path. Your lives have not been spared from this, yet we have watched you. With trembling hands, you've stepped out in faith. Unlike Ashikaga Yoshimasa, you've not taken your broken pieces to a local craftsman. Instead, you have taken these pieces to the great high priest yes. who is acquainted with our weaknesses. Separately and now together, you have already trusted the one from Psalm 147.3 who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. As you allow him, God will repair the cracks with the lacquer resin of his love and gold dust of his grace, highlighting the cracks in beauty rather than covering or hiding them. As your two lives join together today, don't take the gold-dusted paintbrush from God, but allow him to make these places beautiful. When the rocks of life are thrown your way and rain falls on the just, keep allowing our God to mend and melt, and your lives will be a beautiful reflection of him to those around you. One of our favorite quotes about marriage comes from Timothy Keller. Within the Christian vision of marriage, here's what it means to fall in love. It is to look at another person and to get a glimpse of what God is creating and to say, I see who God is making you and it excites me. I want to be part of that. I want to partner with you and God in the journey you are taking to his throne. And when we get there, I will look at your magnificence and say, I always knew you could be like this. I got glimpses of it on earth, but now look at you. Your lives are going to be a beautiful representation of God's craftsmanship and his amazing artwork as long as you stay devoted to him.
We've now come to the time where you'll pledge your love to one another. Please repeat these vows after me. Amy, we're going to start with you. I, Amy, I, Amy. take you, Justin, take me, Justin, to be my lawfully wedded husband, be my, lawfully wedded husband. My, partner in life, my partner in life, and my one true love. And your one true love. I will cherish our friendship. And I, will love you today, and I will love you today, tomorrow, and forever. forever. I, Justin, I, Justin, take you, Amy, take you, Amy. As, my as my lawfully wedded wife, my partner in life, my partner in life. And, my and my one true love. I will cherish our friendship, I will cherish our friendship. and will love you today, and will love you today. tomorrow, and forever. and forever. I would like to invite the immediate family of this precious couple to the platform for a special time of prayer. Family, I would encourage you to gather in a circle around this couple to symbolize your support for their commitment to God and to one another. Brian Robledo, who is the brother of the bride, will lead in prayer. for the gifts and the blessings that you graciously give us. Lord, you remind us in your word that you are a good father that yes. knows yes. how to give good gifts to his children. Yes. yes. Lord, we thank you for the gift that Justin and Amy has have been to our families, to their families and their friends. Yes, Jesus. Oh God, we're thankful for their generosity, their kindness, their willingness to, to always listen to us in our time of need. Thank you for leading them to this point in their lives. I pray that they will never forget the fact that you love them. Yes. We're grateful for the love that you've shown yes. us yes. while we were unlovable. Your yes. word says that we love because you first yes. loved yes. us. Yes, yes, yes. 
Lord, as they begin this new chapter in their lives, I pray that they will abide in you. Yes. Your word says that you are love. And, if, and the one who abides in love abides in you, and you abide in them. I pray that as they continue to walk with you in the context of their marriage, that you will continually mold them to be the people that you desire them to be. We're thankful for the reality that you are faithful to lead them and guide them every step of the way. And right now, we just pray that you would help them, Lord, to have compassion toward each other. Let their speech be filled with kindness. I pray that they would show a spirit of meekness of gentleness toward one another give them patience give them a heart of forgiveness and grace toward each other we pray that you would empower justin and amy to love one another with a deep sacrificial love scripture says that love binds everything together in perfect harmony i pray that the peace of christ will dwell richly in their hearts lord whatever they do we pray that they do it for your honor, yes, yes, Jesus, for your glory. Lord, Make help us, so. Lord, as their family and friends to daily pray for them, to daily lift them up, to encourage them, to empower them. Help us to extend grace and love yes, towards both God. Justin and Amy. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Inasmuch as this couple, Justin and Amy, have pledged their love to one another in the sight of God and in the presence of us as witnesses, and by the power invested in me as a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce that they are husband and wife from this time, now, and forevermore, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, what God has joined together let no man separate. Justin, you may now kiss the bride. It is my privilege to present to you for the first time in public, Mr. and Mrs. Justin Hanna. Thank you so much for being here. Now, there won't be a receiving line out there, but the bride and groom want you to know that they'd like to say hello to each and every one of you. So they're gonna be coming back in momentarily to dismiss you by row. So if you just wait and receive them, that'd be great. They also want you to know, the family wants you to know that you're all invited to the reception, which is right down Gomez at the school center. We would love to see you there. The family also wants me to tell you thank you so much for being here for this wonderful occasion. God bless you.